you know, we were on a good streak of uh, recording stuff before we started it, and then um, I I usually just see if I can do something, and then I keep doing it and forget that once I saw, I uh, was supposed to continue to to do so, but it is what it is. That work we did, Gucci. Alrighty, so coolant overflow, common problem on uh, the C5. If you put any pressure, it will crack right here. It's not a big issue per se. The car won't overheat. It's been like that since I got the car, I believe. Um, as you can see, it'll leak down onto this, and that is right where your ground is. As you can see, so your ground's right there, so it creates a little puddle. Not the best for grounds, which. Um, May solve an issue, which is what I'm going to do today as well. I don't know if I'm going to record it, but um, I'm going to replace this. I have a new one. This is a 97. So 97 to 2000s have the uh, sensor for a low coolant level. So as you can see right yonder, there's that coolant sensor under there. Um, it just tells you if it's low. The 2000 and newers don't have that. And if you get a 2000 and newer... Um, an overflow it comes with this little blank space where the sensor is supposed to go with a little float um, so if you have that it is broken no maybe the lips just like that I don't know it's fine but um yeah so if you have uh, 2000 and newer it does not have that sensor I'm pretty sure I can just leave mine unplugged yeah, because I don't think it'll hold on to there at all. Uh, but leaving it unplugged should not throw the coat. I believe it's an open circuit. The, the light comes on when it closes. So the baffle, well not the baffle, it'll float. Comes down here and then electrical wiring connects there when the float has no coolant. That lets you know that the coolant is low. And so it should be touching, throws the code or message I should say, not a code. Um, so unplugged, it shouldn't throw any message at all. Um... I drive older ship boxes anyway, so I don't really need it to tell me when the coolant's low. But, uh, yeah, so this was 85 plus, like 90 bucks shipped from Amazon. If you get the one specific for the 97 to 2000 that has a sensor, it is 150, I believe. So I don't need that. Uh, I might as well save a little money if it's not something necessary. Um, yeah, pretty simple. Uh, I use a little Harbor Freight uh, liquid water oil transfer pump, any fluid transfer pump. This was six dollars. Um, I just put it in a bag, should probably put it in a container, but I'm gonna reuse that anyway, so it's not a big deal. But uh, yeah, so we're here. I've just been uh, pumping the fluid from in here. As you can probably can't see, you'll need light on it, but uh, just make sure this is as empty as possible so it doesn't create a mess. Uh, it is those two, I believe those are 10 millimeters, but it's a Chevy, so it's probably going to be like an 11 or something. Uh, I'll need to take this hose clamp off. There is, I don't know if you can see it, but there's another bolt that holds on. Um, let me see. So yeah, you can see on this side a little bit better how gross and stuff it is, but... Um, Leaks on into there, so it just makes that whole area just moist and everything. So, replacing that finally, those hose clamp there, hose clamp there, and then there is a bolt, kind of hard to see. There's a bolt under there that you need to do. It's, there it is. So, that little bolt there on the bottom portion. So, three clamps, three bolts comes out. Try to make all the fluid come out from here as you can because it'll make your life easier. Um, comes in comes out that's pretty pretty much it so I'm just replacing that um, here's the location on that third bolt it slides onto there on a stud with a nut that comes off and then we're gonna clean that ground just using a wire brush um, my key fob doesn't work TPMS sometimes doesn't um, and my fog lights don't work relays are all good the horn stays on which should probably just be a membrane but I know these have a lot of ground issues so one ground to clean is one down there, so this boy will get cleaned eventually properly, but I'm going to clean that. That is also a main chassis ground right here, this connector, but mine is a clip connector that I'm worried about here, um, because with that clip connector there, a lot of times 
again, it's that one right there. Um, that connector, they corrode on the inside, so if you clean them off, stuff starts working again. So, I'm going to continue getting all the fluid out of here, take those three bolts off, those three hose clamps, and then we will be at a point where everything is just out and open. So, I'll do that right now. So this was very annoying, very easy, but annoying, trying to do it clean, um, so she said. Um, that's all off, that's all off, it's just those hoses, but trying to get that clamp off, I hate those clamps, I should just get regular worm clamps, but it is what it is, so. Um, slight headache. So, um, this hose goes on the bottom, return, or top, and the other side of that, so. Um, what I need to get off is this is actually a ground, so I need to take that ground off, um, clean the inside of it. It's probably corroded, so um, this portion is already, so it's going to be nasty, but we'll clean it all up, make it nice, and then put this all back together. Um, that's pretty much it, so just take off that bolt. I think it's a 12. Uh, these top, all these to do the coolant overflows are 12s. Um, so take that connector out and then uh, clean up the ground and we'll be back with the clean ground. So, as you can see, these are heavily corroded. Um, those little tabs come up on that side portion. So you just lift the tab up right there and slide it through, but as you can see, it is very corroded on the inside, which is common on these just because the location of it. So. I just use wire brush. I should have got a carb cleaner. Just get inside there a lot better, but we'll see how good this brush can do. But that is gross and that can cause a lot of issues. There's one here and the other one's right there on that side. So check these before if you have any issues with your C5 because they are common to uh, corrode and give you signs. So hopefully this will fix, fix my fog. And then I think the BCM is that one down there. So we'll try this and go from there. Okay, so fuck electrical shit. Cleaned all that up. That's good. Um, all this is cleaned up. So that connector goes into it the best I could. This bottom uh, part and then that stud. That's copper down there. It's not rust, so I believe so. Uh, these are tens, not twelves. I misspoke on the last one. I'm tired. I have a headache. But uh, cleaned up this fuel or this uh, frame rail just because obviously the coolant made it all sticky and all that good stuff so whole thing would use a great detail but this is a lot better I'm gonna install this tape the entire unit just so I can try and see a little bit better and then um, put the new coolant overflow in and we'll be done for today so um, I guess I can show video of it all put back together real quick uh, but yeah all right, I am done, I, pretty much, I believe. If not, I'm gonna fucking throw this car off a cliff. Um, it's annoying as shit to get to everything. It's gonna leak everywhere. I just cleaned it all and then it still had coolant leak out, so you can probably hear my annoyance, but it's all back together. Um, connected and everything. There's a new junction, you can see it's all taped up. Um, this fucking Norman part. Uh, I got from Amazon. I'm sure it's all Dorman stuff. Uh, it doesn't fit. Um, you have to pretty much mill out the inside portion of this where these studs go through. Um, it's too small, so you have to. I just use a screwdriver because I don't have my drill. It's in the house, and I didn't feel like walking all the way over there and getting that, so I just use a screwdriver. But um, yeah, you have to make those bigger. Hopefully, it doesn't leak through there. If it does, I'm gonna. Like call them warranty that because that's annoying that you need to modify it just to get it to fit but otherwise it all works um, I believe it does um, I'm gonna throw, throw the coolant that I took out back in and then I have distilled water in the back if I need to top it off all the way um, if the low coolant light comes on I'm, I don't care at some point I'll get one that has a sensor if I really need to but I can just clear it I'm gonna call it a day so, uh, this is annoying, easy job, but annoying if you want to do it the clean way. So, that is it for today. I am going to take a shower and contemplate my life. So, yeah. Three bolts, 
three annoying hose clamps later and then some cleaning on the grounds and we'll see if my fog lights work and maybe I can program my key fob and the TPMS won't start messing up. Well, they're already on and off randomly said service so those are probably messed up anyway but I'm done. I'm babbling, rambling, scrambling Eminem at this point so have a good one people. Later. I uh, finished all that a different day. Drove the car and the low coolant light will stay on if you don't have the sensor plugged in. So all I did, as you can see, it's not leaking from here anymore, so that's a plus. But uh, all I did, if I can find it, somewhere down here, there we go. Yeah, so this wiring harness, if I can even get it out now, took it down there, but um. So that's the connector. Literally, you just use a paper clip so it uh, sends a signal so it completes the circuit. Uh, if you want, you can get a pigtail that is this connector um, and do it that way. I just use a paper clip, it's in there pretty snug. And then I just put it down there, tuck it away, and then you can kind of tuck it right under where the sensor is supposed to be. So. Uh, I'm trying to get that done, but yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. So it just rests right there. So that's what I did. Um, coolant light doesn't come on. So if you leave it just unplugged, the uh, sensor will read that there's low coolant. So pretty easy fix. Just use a paper clip. Uh, makes it a lot cheaper. So you can use this style. Um, like I said, 90 bucks as opposed to. 180 200 dollars i think the cheapest one i saw was like 150 for ac doco or dorman one so but this is the 2000 plus with no sensor plug-in exact same part just no sensor just use a paper clip call it a day so hope this helps someone and uh like share subscribe all that good stuff gonna be doing some more stuff to the vet um once i get a different tire set up i'm gonna lower it just because the previous owner that came with the wheels they're 335s right now and they're going to rub if i lower it the front i will probably lower at some point but i have a splitter i'm gonna put on as well but more to come so hope this helps someone